Hello folks, it's the first year here again, welcome to another one of my videos. This is another model review where we look at one of the older models that are available on the second hand market and uh, see if it's any good for you to purchase. So in this one we're going to look at the EFE Bristol Low Decker. We've got two examples. We've got the Bristol Omnibus version, which is its box there, catalogue number 13901. We've got the Cheltenham District Traction one, catalogue number 14004. Incidentally, in real life, Cheltenham District were a subsidiary of Bristol Omnibus, but they maintained a separate livery and identity, as you can see there. And that uh, was the case until the early 1970s. Now, I mentioned in one of my recent reviews of the EFE Lilla National that we think of EFE as quite a recent phenomenon. But in actual fact, they've been going for over 30 years. I'm doing this video in January 2024. The releases you can see here, um, 13901, the Bristol Omnibus one, was released in September 1992. And the Cheltenham District one, 14004, was released in June 1993. So they're both over 30 years old. At one time, a 30-year-old model would have been worth a lot of money, but EFE in the early days flooded the market. They released thousands and thousands of every single um, catalogue number. So there are still loads of them about, and the prices are quite low, as we'll see later on. So as you can see, we've got one in the box and one not. So I'll just take the one in its box out, and then we'll crack on. So you've got the standard EFE box, the cardboard outer and the uh, inner plastic tray. The bus uh, sits in there and that just uh, goes over it. And there they are both together. So the early EFEs weren't flush glazed. Um, later ones had glazing like this. This is part of the uh, glazing strip out of a Bristol RE. You can see it's textured so that the uh, windows go into the apertures when you put it in. And it gives a kind of flush glazed effect. The earlier um, EFA releases had these instead, these are inserts. This one's out of a Leyland PD2, not a low decker, but it gives you the uh, basic idea. So they're not flush glazed, and in comparison to some of the later die casts, they're maybe a little bit clunky clanky. But does that matter? Well, no. If you look at it, it looks exactly like it should do. It looks like a Bristol low decker. Um, I've no real experience of these in real life, apart from riding on a couple of preserved ones. I grew up in Hull, and none of the major operators there operated any. There was a company called Good News Travels that had some. They uh, specialised in pilgrimages to religious sites and theirs had beds and kitchen facilities and curtains in the windows and things like that. Uh, I vaguely remember seeing them when the bus turned for the city centre. If you look further up the road, you can just see their depot in the distance with some low deckers parked outside. But some of the earliest buses I uh, got into when I was a kid were Bristol VRs of Eastern Coachworks bodies. And I came to recognise the Eastern Coachworks body quite easily because it said at the front of both decks, Coachwork by Eastern Coachworks, Lower Stoft. So when I first saw a picture of a low decker, I recognised it straight away as an Eastern Coachworks product. And it does capture the look really, really well. I've had um, this debate with various friends in pubs over a pint about model railways. Um, in terms of class 37 and 47 locomotives in model railways, I always prefer the Lima versions because they look like what they're actually representing. Some of the more modern ones that are accurate down to like a tenth of a millimetre in size and have every detail you can imagine, they just some, somehow don't capture the look of the prototype. And that's true for die-cast buses. Some later releases by other companies, you know, they might be dimensionally accurate, they might have every detail going, but they don't actually capture the look. This one, yeah, the detail's a bit more basic. It's not quite flush glazed, although you can't really tell looking at it but it looks like a Bristol low decker. The all important front of it, the face, that's normally on display in the display case or on your model railway, that looks spot on accurate. Really, really good. So we'll have a look around it and then uh, we'll have a look at some of the little problems and bits and pieces. We'll look at the Chelton one as well. So looking at the front, as I say, it does capture the look really well. You've got representation of the opening windows there, which you can see quite nicely in the light there. Blinds printed on so they can do different variations, not a problem. Special mention to the grill, that's uh, really, really nice on these. The printing's lovely, the uh, representation of the vents looks absolutely brilliant. I've repainted a few of these in my time and I always mask the grill over and try and keep the original grill because it looks really, really good. They did do two different types of grill. Um, we haven't got them, these have both got the later version that's slightly curved at the bottom. They did the earlier version that was straight across the bottom as well on some releases. But as I say, we haven't got one of those to review today. Slight word of warning, the uh, wings there are plastic um, and they're just moulded, they're not painted. On these, because they're moulded in a contrast colour in black, um, they look 
really good. However, if you get one of the releases where the wings are in the same colour as the body, they do tend to look a bit plasticky. So what you can do is either put a coat of paint on if you can find a similar match to the main body colour, or better still, just put a coat of satin varnish over them just to give them a bit of zhuzh and take the plasticky look away from them. As I say, because these are contrasting, they don't look too bad. They don't look too uh, plasticky at all. So go around to the side again. Door's nicely uh, modelled, as you can see. Four-leaf door with uh, eight little windows. Opening windows represented. Transfer's nicely done on the side. Legal letter and everything like that. And going around to the back. The emergency exit in the centre of the rear, as it was on this uh, type of low decker. These are FLF low deckers. In other words, um, flat floor, long uh, wheelbase and forward entrance. In other words, the door near the front. Early EFE releases, as I've said previously in other reviews, didn't have registration plates unless there was a deluxe version of the release, which in the case of these two there wasn't, didn't do a deluxe version, so didn't have registration plates. This uh, Bristol Omnibus one takes that a stage further, it doesn't have any fleet numbers either, so it can be uh, any fleet number you want it to be really. Turn it around to the offside again, nicely detailed, as I say they are a bit more basic than more recent die casts, but actually look really really good looking at the roof again panel detail nicely modeled the uh, ventilators along the cove panels there lovely and just turn it over there's a basic representation of the chassis if you were going to display the underside if you had it up on a ramp or something you would need to paint the back section in black but yeah not bad at all now I've mentioned in previous reviews that EFE likes to model the variations of the vehicles in real life. I've already mentioned the different types of grill they did. But there's also these. Um, a lot of lowdeckers in the 1960s were bought with what they call cave, brown cave heating systems. It was a kind of heating and ventilation system. By all accounts it didn't work too well but you could always tell the buses that had it because they had two grills um, either side of the destination blind. And they also had a couple of grills just on the front of the sides there. Now a lot of manufacturers would have done um, just transfers to represent that but EFE didn't. They actually did um, a different casting for the upper part of the bus. So these castings as in as with a lot of EFEs come apart in the middle and they cast an entirely new um, upper part for the ones with K Brown Cave heaters with the grills on the front recessed in and the ones on the side casting as well, which is really nice to see. I've said it before about EFE, but kudos to them for doing that and not just relying on uh, on transfers. So we'll have a look around the Gloucester one as well. Sorry, the Cheltenham one, should I say, Gloucester one. Gloucestershire Echo there. We'll have a look on the Cheltenham one as well. This one has got the fleet number on, 7221. But again, it's a standard EFE release with no uh, registration plate. If you do get one, you want to put the registration number on it. The registration of vehicle 7221 in real life was EHT110C. And again, just look at the roof and underneath there. Very nice indeed. Are there any problems with these? Well, yeah, there's a slight one with the finishing of this one. Um, Bristol Omnibus had... All the low deckers in the 60s had the cave ground cave heaters, as you can see this release doesn't have, until 1967 when they bought some that didn't have it. You think, ah great, that must be a 1967 bus then, but uh, no, because the 67 batch didn't have the upper cream band. So if you've got the two cream bands on the bus, it should have cave ground cave heaters, but it's only a minor niggle, it's a minor thing of decoration. What you can do if you want to is paint over the uh, upper cream band. And I'll show you one where I've done that. I've just painted over the uh, upper band in green. Uh, I've put some adverts on this one as well. And some registration plates. And I've also changed the blind whilst I was at it. And I've given the whole thing a coat of varnish. It looks like it's been repainted if you put it next to the uh, actual factory release. But I haven't repainted it. I've just sprayed it with satin varnish just to tone down the gloss finish a little bit. So that's the kind of thing you can do with them. So we come to prices. Um... As I said, I'm doing this in January 2024. They're by no means scarce, these releases. that You can get some low-deckers that are uh, more sought after that weren't released in such large numbers. And you can go into the 30s, um, £30, £34. I've seen them advertised, certain releases. 
but these ones are not uh, particularly sought after not rare the two of these together cost me £14.85 from eBay and that included postage as well the one that I repainted um, I think was cheaper than that I think it was about £8 including postage it came um, in that condition by the way as I say I've modified it so the three of them together £22-£23 and that's why I tend to buy older second hand die casts because if you buy a new one you're looking anywhere from 30 odd pounds upwards whereas you can get three older die casts and uh, put your own stamp on them for less than the cost of one new model but yeah so you're looking somewhere between sort of eight ten pounds up to about 15 for the standard releases with or without postage in there as well but yeah very nice model looks the part certainly looks like it should do if you need one for your display case or for a model railway then go out and get one as i said you do a few little modifications to them something i have done on this one you can't really see as i've painted the interior as well but uh, you can't really see that apart from the silver uh, tops to the seats there because the interior is on them are modeled in one color and they tend to be molded in black on these early ones which uh, is not representative of anything the uh, interiors of the rail buses were green but yeah, nice model, well worth uh, investing a few pounds in. So as always, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please press the like button so more people can find it. And please consider subscribing if you'd like to. But again, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.